Rabotai, we, are, we, we have to discuss a topic that we've been discussing about Bitachon and Munan Hashem. And I write the sixth thing that a person must know. And if you didn't hear until now, go back and look at, uh, you have, we'll have it on Torah any time. Look at the menu, you'll see. You go to Palachi P and you'll see the old classes. It's a very important, I'm serious. A person came over to me and told me, Rabbi, you don't understand. I said, En Od Mulvado, we spoke about En Od Mulvado, nobody but Hashem. He's a young guy. The guy is 15 years old. He said, I had a sentimental value. I didn't know what to do. I lost it. I said, Hashem, there's nothing but you. And Bok Hashem, a guy told me that 40 years ago, the guy's maybe 65 now, he said, 40 years ago, he was going jet skiing. You know jet skiing on the water now? You know jet ski? You go on a, on a thing, jet ski, you go, uh, you ever do it or no? Huh? It's a water motorcycle. It's like a, water mo- it's like a motorcycle in the water. You know what I'm talking, right? There's, I did it, it was Hadid, by the way. You know, like, you know, you go over the wave, eh? See, wear life vest, and they take you on, and this. There was a guy who told me a story that he was macho, you know, he's a young guy, big guy. What life vest? He wants to feel free, no life vest. So he was going and going. And what happened was the jet ski flew off, you know, and it just like chucked off and he fell in the ocean and the jet ski started flying. And it was, it was far, the jet ski was far. So he says to himself, well, I have two options. I could go, he looked, he looked, the shore, he looked at the shore. He says, you know what? I'm gonna swim to the shore. And he started swimming towards shore. He's going, going, going. 20 minutes, half hour. He couldn't do it anymore. Him and his macho buzz muscles, hey, he can do it, you know? How strong can you be? <laughs> how, 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 he's the strongest guy, how, how, how far can he swim? And he realizes he's not even close to the shore. It was an illusion with his eyes to see that the shore was closed. He didn't know what to do, he thought he was done. He's in the ocean, he doesn't know what to do. He screams out, hey, no, Hashem, save me. He said when he said, Hashem, save me, within, I don't know, two minutes, Within a minute, there was a boat that spotted him from far, spotted a guy, like, and they went and they saved him. And he'll never forget that story. He says, En on the vado, there's nothing but Hashem. There's another story about a guy named Al Azar. You heard the story, Jack, about Al Azar? This is a true story that I heard it many, many times from the community members over here. It's older, much older than me, but the story goes how there was two, two men. They were, going, they were going on a business trip and um, um, they, they landed in, um, in a Jewish community and they went to a hotel. They went to a hotel and in the hotel they said, okay, fine, we, I think it was LA, I believe it was. And they said, this is perfect. There's kosher food around. We're gonna order, uh, we're gonna order, uh, what's it called? As soon as we get off the airport, we'll order from the, from the, from the supermarket. They land, it was a delay. It was a delay. They got delayed in the airport from before, whatever, something happened like that. The, 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 they landed before Shabbat, but all the stores were closed. They kept on cl- calling this store, that store, that So All the stores were closed. They came to the hotel room. This is a true story I'm telling you. They came to the hotel room and they tried everything to get your bad food. They tried everything to get your bad food. You know what to do. Um, the lady says, well, we only have this room available. Somebody just, whatever, just checked out. The only room we have available is this room. Ta-da! And it was like, uh, I don't know, it was like a suite. It was like overpriced. You know, and it was like, they're like, oh, we have no choice. Your bat's coming in. We have no choice. That's what they have available. We got to book this. We have no choice, nothing to do. And all of a sudden, they come Friday night. They're saying, both of them, two friends, they're saying, Ay, Shabbat. We never miss Seudat Shabbat. 
Baruch Hashem, we spent, uh, we were ready to spend whatever it is for any food there was. Ay, 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 Shabbat, oh my goodness. They get dressed, they, get, they take a shower, they get dressed in the Shabbat clothing, and they're, they're praying to Borei Olam, Hashem, send us Shabbat food, please. We have nothing, no Kiddush, no hello, no nothing. All of a sudden, one of the, one of the friends, he opens, you know how they have like the mini bar in some uh, hotels? You know what I'm talking about? You go into a hotel and they have like a small, uh, like a mini bar. They have like some Coke, some water, some this, some that. He opens it up and he says, you know what? Let me see what they have. Maybe they have like uh, something. I don't know, whatever it is. He opens up the mini bar and he sees halot. He sees kedem kiddush. He sees wine. He sees kibbeh lahmaji. He's flipping out. He screams, ow! You're not going to believe this. Hashem answered my prayers. I'm praying. Hashem send the Shabbat food. I open up the door and I see a whole lot of raj, kibbe, lahmajin. I see potato, chicken. I see everything. And he's, what? I don't believe you. Since I prayed to Hashem. You see how Ibunan Hashem works? And he's looking at him. What are you talking about? He says, look. He sees the fridge. He sees it's filled with uh, 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 and kibbeh and kiddush and, and, and halot and he's, he couldn't believe it three, four halot everything he's whoa what's going on over here he's going crazy he's going wild they have a fabulous kiddush they even open up they, they open up the, the, the when they're opening up the, the, the drawers they see wow what's going on they have plastic silverware they have like a what's going on over here Hashem, you really like sent an angel and you put it in this room that we spent over so it was a suite, whatever it was, for Shabbat Kodesh. It's a true story that happened in our community. It happened many years ago. So I'm sitting on the table, in a breakfast table in one of the shuls, and I'm hearing this story from who? The person who it happened to, like the, the friend. Listen to this. It says, what happened? Friday morning, two friends were in that room. Friday morning, they were in that room. One friend had a crazy cramp, a crazy stomach cramp. And he was such a cramp, he said, I, I can't handle the pain. I can't handle the pain, I gotta get home. I gotta get home, I, my wife has to take care of this, I gotta go to the doctor, and my doctor, I don't know which, where I'm in LA, I don't know where doctors over here, I gotta take a plane out, I gotta go. I don't wanna take a chance. So they looked at everything, they're like, where are we going, this, that, I gotta get out of here. Whatever it is, I gotta go, I gotta get out of here. I don't wanna take a chance over the weekend, I don't know what's gonna happen, I'm flying back home. You wanna come, come, no, no. His friend said, listen, we're a team, I came with you over here, I'll go back with you. You don't wanna spend the weekend over here because you're feeling cramps, I'll go back with you. So both of them, they took a flight, they started taking a flight back. Now they open up the fridge and they see all this food, they said, listen, we prepared the whole Shabbat meal over here. What are we going to do? Should we just leave it? Should we take it? He says, nah, just leave it. We don't have uh, time to, to, to carry everything back. Our wife's cooked. You don't need anything. Just leave everything over here and, and kish. They went, they left. They left all the Shabbat food. And now these guys, the two guys that came in, they saw all the Shabbat food. They're saying, angels, angels sent this. And their whole, like for, for, for maybe six months, they're talking about the story. Wow, wow, remember, remember. Finally, one day, they're sitting with a bunch of boys outside. They're having like a, like a dinner together. They're having like hanging out. And one guy says to the other friend, I wonder what happened that day. I wonder what happened to tell them that day. Who, who came in next to take all our Shabbat food? I, and the guy says, what? That was your, I was there, oh my goodness. What? They, a, they bumped into each other. They, it's a true story that happened. It's a famous story in the community. The whole world knows this. Yes, any community member over the age of 45, 50, maybe even 60, they'll tell you the Al-Azar story. It's a famous story. It's a famous story that these two guys, they didn't know what to do for Shabbat, and all of a sudden they prayed, they, they tried getting the food it's to show you. Try, try, try. Hashem helps. Hashem helps. You did whatever you can do. You did, they could do whatever they can do. They got the lead in the air, they, 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 they made a re, re, rerun, whatever it was, they got to the airport, they're calling every supermarket in the LA district, they're calling restaurants, they're calling everything, everything's closed, closed, closed. They did their part, they should do your part, I'll take care of the rest, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, I'll make sure there's food for you.
You hear what's going on? Abotai, ain't no mavado. Ain't no mavado. And you know who see it? The people of anybody in, 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 any, in any area of, of finances or health, they see it. Like I'm saying, mean to say, yeah. Then you say, a guy is not, not so well, not so this, not so that. I'll tell you, it's a true story that happened to a relative of mine. True story that happened to a relative of mine. And I'm going to end off with this, but they went for a scan. You know, sometimes they're over 50, they take, like a, they take like a scan of the body. You know what I'm talking about? They take a picture. So there was a thing. They were taking a scan of a, a, a certain part of the body. So the guy that was taking the picture, uh, he messed up the, the, the picture and he put it up, meaning too, too high up of the body. And, uh, and he took the picture and he told the person, oh, by the way, I have to, I have to low, I, I messed up, the, sorry, I, forgive me, I messed up the picture, I need to take another picture, it was, I had to scan it more, I took it too high, I got to take it too, on the lower end of the body, I got to take it low, lower, so, uh, okay, I'll take it lower, they found out that the higher part of the body that he scanned, there was a, a cancerous thing over there, and they told the guy, we found a small piece of cancer right now we're going to do a surgery and burn it out before it spreads and he got saved that happened to my father no joke we made a seuda we made a whole party about it it was an amazing thing you see the yad Hashem you see the hand of Hashem that's what it's all about and over the door and over here